Thank you. That's quite an introduction. I wish my mother could have been here. <laughs> she would have believed all of that. But I love John Loper. <laughs> Nobody, I'm going to drive 200 miles after 3 o'clock in the afternoon and then preach and then drive back 200 miles and then leave the house at 410 for another assignment. I wouldn't do that for anybody else but Jesus and John Loper. <laughs> but it's a great day to be alive. Thank both of you. That was a little ragged fire. Let's try it again. It's a great day to be alive. Amen. If you're alive. Amen. Hey, you tell me about it. I have traveled so far this year over 200,000 miles. I've been to Europe three times. I just got back a couple of months now for, from the Italian General Council, if you think you've been to church. Hallelujah. If you think you've been to church. I remember when I was a young missionary, and they had our preachers in jail in Italy. Our people were scattered. There weren't too many of them then. And I remember preaching in, in Italy in the 40s, and every service we had was smashed. You know what you heard? You know what you heard? Maranatha. You don't even know the word. But I remember when I was a young preacher starting out 56 years ago, that was how we greeted one another was Maranatha. You know what it means? He cometh. He cometh. You don't hear that anymore. Because we've allowed the eschatologist to come in. Put God on a chart. Big wheels, fire at the end. Hell, they always put hell on there at the end. <laughs> no. It's amazing. So we've got it all boxed in. Some poor sinner sitting there, he said, hey, I got three wheels to go before I need to worry. Are you with me? I'm not a camp meeting preacher. I quit preaching camp meetings years ago. That's the last crowd that needs priests to. All they do is go around and hear sermons. And they say, oh God, let's hope this boy preaches better than the one last night, you know. And the one we got coming tomorrow night, oh Lord, help us. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. But I mean that. But I went up and down this country raising thousands of dollars to be sent to Italy to fight the case of the Italian Pentecostals through the high courts of Rome. And they won. They won. Came out of jail and started seminars right away on church growth. No, they went to their knees. No nation in the world has fasted more or prayed more for revival than Italy. It is now the number two Pentecostal country in the world per capita in the shadow of the Vatican. I preached their council, which I've done, what, four or five times through the years, but it was in Sicily. They now have over 1,000 churches. They own 40 radio stations, lock, stock, and barrel. That's pushing the gospel back and forth across Italy, 24 hours a day. And a few months ago, the high courts of Rome gave the 
the Assembly of God Church in Italy the same writ as the Roman Catholic Church. Immunity. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Tell me about it, man. Woo! And we had church. And we sang, of all things, he, the king is coming. Woo, the king is coming. I can hear the trumpet sounding. Amen. And now his face I see. Oh, I get, I get hungry to hear people talk and sing one more time about his coming. Amen. We used to preach he could come tonight. Man, we go home, and the last thing we did was get on our knees, and we said, oh, God, we loved everybody before we got in bed. Oh, we forgave everybody before we got in bed. Why? Because we believed that Jesus could come tonight. Amen? But we don't, we don't preach that anymore. The eschatologist has told us when he's coming. We don't believe the book, we believe the eschatologist. You, no, I better not say that, but. <laughs> the king is coming. Amen. 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 You know, we used to hear sermons on Jesus could come tonight. Great sermons on the coming of the Lord. You don't hear that anymore. Now we're talking about kingdom now. He's going to hold off now until I got news for you. He's coming when he's satisfied. He's coming. Amen. People say, but you know, if, if you really want to throw one, do a prophetic conference. Oh, 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 they'll fill this place up with nosy people. <laughs> they only want to know about prophecy because they're interested in events. And if you really analyze it, they go to prophetic conferences with the same mental stance as people who read their daily horoscope. Not because they're waiting and eager for his coming. Half of them are scared to death he is coming. Are you with me? Because it gets a little rougher from here to the river. But he's coming. Amen. Among all of the uncertainties we're facing tonight, there is one sure thing. You can count on it. Take it to the bank. He is coming. Amen. He's coming. Amen. Make no mistake about it. Throw a prophetic conference. Whew. You know, you know, if I was going into anything else besides missions, which I won't, because I don't know anything else, thank God, I would go into prophecy. And I'd have three night prophetic seminar. Well, I love seminars. You know, people always want me to go to a seminar. These people that have to go to renewal every once in a while bug me. What if, what if the devil got to you between renewals? I'm going to tell you something, mister. If I didn't get renewed every day, I'd go to hell. I couldn't wait for renewal. I have to have daily strength. Amen? I have to eat of the manna daily. Because if I don't, out of my innermost being, how can flow rivers of living water? If I'm dried up half the time, got to go to a seminar. Somebody wanted me to go to a seminar. I said, what kind? They said, marriage encounter. 
I said, I've been married to the same woman 50 years, man. It's been an encounter every day. <laughs> she just still doesn't understand why I talk to traffic when I'm driving. <laughs> Take it home and park it. Why don't you let your mother drive? <laughs> she said, Charles, they can't hear you. I said, thank God. She said, when are you going to quit talking to traffic? I said, when idiots quit driving cars, that's when. <laughs> but we don't run out to a seminar, <laughs> marriage encounter. God help you. If you're living right, you're going to make it. <laughs> and if she's not living right, pray for her. Keep bringing her to church. God will get to her. <laughs> and you know, if I had this three-night seminar on prophecy, the first night, <laughs> the first night I'd wow them because I would talk about the computer beast <laughs> in Brussels. That's good for a whole night. When is Jesus coming? Ooh, when the computer beasts are all set up in Brussels. I remember I was living in Brussels when the, when the common market moved into Brussels with 7,000 employees, built that tremendous building, put those tremendous computers in there. Somebody sent me, somebody sent me a, a, a clipping out of a magazine, an article, and said, Brother Greenaway, we know Jesus is coming now because here the, 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 the beast has his computer all set up, every name. I said to my wife, I said, I'm going down there and see that thing. And I went down there. The only sign I saw was IBM. <laughs> Had nothing to do with his coming. But all oh, people love it. Talk about the computer beast with the Lord. They're going to come. But where are they the next week? Are we really interested in this coming? Are we? Are we? Well, the second night, man, I would get on 666. 666. I'd have it on license plates in Jerusalem. That did well. He's coming now because we're seeing the sign 666. The computer beast in Brussels. Then the third night I would work on plastic credit cards. Then it would all be over. I want to tell you something, mister. We need to think about his coming, when he's coming, how he is coming, and for whom is he coming? Amen? And are we ready? I don't mean do we go to church, do we pay tithes? I mean if Jesus should come tonight. It's as simple as that. Are we ready? Well, when is he coming? People say when there's wars and rumors of wars, then he's coming. Pestilence. No, he's not coming. There have been wars and pestilence and tribulation ever since the fall of man. Amen? All you got to do is read the stories. It's in the book. He didn't say, then I will come when there's earthquakes. No, or when they increase. That isn't when, when he said he would come. But we're looking and looking and looking for signs and overlooking the main point is 
not really when he's coming, but when he comes, am I ready? Are you ready? Is a lost world out there ready? Amen? And what are we doing to get people ready? I'll tell you when he's coming. You've heard me say it before, I'll say it again. His coming is equated. It is tied not to earthquakes and wars. And even the spirit of the Antichrist in the world, his coming, here's when he'll come, and this gospel of the kingdom, amen, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations then shall the end be. Amen. 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 Woo! He said, I'm coming when you, the church, has borne witness of me to all of the nations of the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Then I will come. He is coming when he is satisfied not when I'm satisfied, when he's satisfied. Amen. That's when he's coming. His coming has to do not with wars or rumors of wars. It has to do with the harvest. And every time you win a soul, every time you build a church, you're bringing back the king. Amen. Woo! Every time you bear witness of him, you're bringing back the king. Hallelujah. Woo! That's when he's coming. Behold... I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. You don't hear that anymore. When I went to Bible school, our Bible school was called Maranatha. We only had two messages in those years, the cross and the coming. I'll tell you one thing, mister. We were not taught about Jesus. We were taught Jesus. Amen, there's a difference. We weren't taught about the acts of the apostles. We were taught acts. Amen. Woo! And the action was getting out and witnessing. I remember when I was saved, if I didn't hit at least 10 people a day, I felt like I was backslidden. And that if Jesus would come tonight, he would be very displeased with me. Now, 80% of the church does not even witness. Oh, we want to go to church and get happy. There's nothing wrong with being happy. That's a good thing. But it's what about, it's what you're happy about. If you're just happy about fun, food, and fellowship. And here I go. <laughs> Some man came up to me at one of these banquets I do every weekend. He had a big piece of pizza. 
he had cheese strung from Dan to Beersheba. He had a big Coke. He walked up to me and said, Brother Greenaway, isn't this fellowship wonderful? I said, God, if that's fellowship, I'm Chinese. There's nothing wrong with fun, food, and fellowship. But in heaven's name, call it what it is, socializing. You read the book, fellowship was when they walked one another through the fire and they died at the foot of the cross and they died with their arms around one another in the lion's dens, amen? That was fellowship. And they bore one another's burdens. One thing to get... You can get anybody to a fun food and fellowship. You can't get in everybody to go down to the hospital at 3 o'clock in the morning. Are you with me? I'm only going to be here tonight and I'll be gone. A few minutes. I might come back sometime. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Amen. And I, John, saw and heard these things, and I immediately made a tape. and called in the video boys said my lord what an opportunity Woo! are you with me amen and i john saw these things and i fell down amen i fell down Amen. Nobody pushed me over. No. No! Because my heart burned within me. And he bore through with him. He is the revelation. There is no new revelation. There is only one revelation. And that's him. Hallelujah. He is the revelation. Has always been the revelation. Will always be the revelation. Amen. Woo, he's coming, man. He's coming. Whew. Remember when we used to sing, Oh, the king is coming. I can hear the trumpet sounding. You don't even know it. And now his face I see. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God. Oh, the king is coming. Oh, the king is coming. I can hear. And now his face I see. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Woo, the king is coming. I can hear the trumpet sounding. Amen. Woo. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy servant, thy fellow servant, and my brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Do you realize that as I travel up and down this world, churches, you name it, there's not another man in the assemblies of God that looks at more congregations than I do in a year's time. And the thing that 
that bothers me is to walk into a service, go through it, and never feel that the people worshipped God. Well, they sang good. They had a good message, three points in a poem. They had a good offering. I better not say that. But anyway. But I longed to see people come into a church and worship. I'm not talking about just saying, I'm talking about worship. Like Isaiah. Isaiah, the whole world was wrong. He limped into the temple. <laughs> and he went straight to the video machine. No, he went to the counselor. Pardon me. That's where he went. No. Isaiah limped into that temple. A beaten down prophet. But he said, I saw the Lord. Amen. I saw the Lord. I didn't see the preacher, and I didn't see the choir, and I didn't see the people. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Hallelujah. Amen. And what did he do? He fell prostrate down like John of old and worshipped. And as he worshipped, he saw his own sins. Amen. He didn't see the sins of the people. He saw his sins. Amen. His sins. And there's nothing as great as a preacher that can see his own sins. Or a deacon that can see his own sins. Amen. And then worships God until the angel takes the fire from off the altar. Whoo! And burns it away. Amen. True worship. I remember when we used to go to church just to see what God would do. We didn't go to church to see what what some evangelist was going to do. We went to church expecting God. Get my Bible, Eddie, please. I hope you're taking care of Eddie. Eddie's a great he's going to be a great missionary. Amen. Hey, thank you, Eddie. Yeah, I love you, man. Love you. You take care of him. If you don't, I'll come back and talk to you about it. Don't give me that stuff. Well, we're, we're almost reached the saturation point. I'm tired of that. What if Jesus would have said somewhere between Pilate's Hall and Calvary's Hill, man, I've reached the saturation point. I've signed all the faith promises I'm going to sign for that bunch. Now they're going to kill me. What if he would have quit? Are you with me? Can't tell by your faces. Now, Eddie, get my water, please. <laughs> you know, I'm one of the best references he has, so he has to help me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it, man. I got that fresh cook. Thank you. I remember following Charles S. Price around, and I've seen 3,000 people whopped by the Spirit. Amen? Not with canned tata, but with the Spirit. And people would jump up and say, God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Somebody else would jump up and say, hey, I, I, I need to get saved. One night a preacher, got, a fellow stood up in one of his meetings in Chicago and said, shut up, preacher. I want to get saved. Can't get saved with you talking all evening. Well, no, when that happens, you're having church. Amen. One night, they couldn't have the meeting on Monday night in, 
in Chicago in that huge building. And on a Monday night, a Model T truck pulled up in front of the building. Some boys, big old boys, got out of that truck. And on the back of the truck, there was a bed with their mother in it. She was dying. They brought her for Charles Price to pray for. Carried that bed and all into that great arena and got in there to find out there was nobody there and no service. And they stood there weeping when an old German janitor up front was kind of sweeping and he looks back and he saw them. And he went back and he said, what you want? What you want? They said, well, we came with Mother and we were going to have Brother Price pray for her, anoint her and pray for her. He said, is that all you want? Is to pray? Wait. And he went up front and he found an oil bottle. Amen, if that's all you want, eh? To pray. God, where do we get the idea we got to have a three-ring circus before God's going to do something? Amen! Amen! Woo! He said, out of your innermost being should flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Woo! To quench a thirsty soul and heal sick bodies. Amen! You don't need a three-ring circus. You just need Jesus. Amen! The healer! And he anointed that woman in his, his broken German. And he prayed for her. Oh, God, mine, God in Himmel, you know, heal her. And that woman jumped up and made three turns around that arena. Hallelujah. Healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. When you bow down and worship him, something happens. Amen. Worship is the key. Not form. I ask myself the question, man. I have to ask myself the question. I preach in churches are dead. If you stuck your head in the door on Sunday morning and said, boo, half of them would drop off of their seats. Somebody said that somebody died in one of our Sunday morning services and they called for the paramedics and the ambulances and they came rushing into that church and carried out half of it. <laughs> Tell me about dead churches. And, and deadness comes from a lack of worship. Buddy, when you strike real worship, the fire will fall from off the altar, hallelujah, and strange things will happen. True worship. Are you with me? And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of the, this book. For the time is at hand. He that is unjust. Now, when he comes, he that is unjust will remain unjust. Do you hear me? If there's any sinners here tonight, forget about thinking about the second chance. Amen? Whew. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Amen? Amen? And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega. Woo! The beginning and the end. I'm every note on the scale. I'm the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley and the bright and the morning star. Hallelujah! Woo! I am your high tower, your fortress, yes. your healer, hallelujah. Me, I am. Thank God he is. Because some people wouldn't have saved me. 
I was a wild Irish kid off the streets of East Pittsburgh, I'd knock your head off. I could cuss 15 minutes and not say the same word twice. <laughs> Nobody loved me but my mother. Tell me about it. We was a poor, we just painted our feet black and laced up our toes. We used to look at the holes in our shoes and say, we'll soon be on our feet again. <laughs> we laughed our way through the Great Depression. Herbert Hoover said, prosperity's just around the corner. We said, is he saying corner or corner? <laughs> we laughed about going up to the lady's house saying, we're so hungry we could eat grass. She said, go around back of the house. It's longer. <laughs> but we laugh about taking a button up to the lady's door and asking her if she could please sew a shirt on it. We were poor, man. I mean poor. But one night, hallelujah, I walked into a good old backwoods gingham calico Pentecostal church and he saved me. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't mean half ways. He saved me. Praise Filled God. me with his spirit. Oh, yeah. Called me to preach or whatever it is I do. Woo! You know the first man, McDuffie, the first man, you are McDuffie, aren't you? The first man I told, I said, you know what? He said, what? I said, God called me to preach. He said, you? I said, me? He had to listen to me preach before he died. God is faithful. Went to Bible school and was voted the boy the most unlikely to succeed. Now I'm a visiting professor at that college. Woo! Dr. Greenaway. Every year I go there to lecture, I tell them about it, man. I have forgiven them, but I'll never let them forget it. Never. <laughs> never. I serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! And every time I get discouraged, I don't have to go to a seminar. I can go to him, hallelujah, and tell him to help me one more time. And he'll help me one more time. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! And in my heart there rings a melody. Hallelujah. And I can sing the king is coming. Woo! Because I'm going to see him. Amen. Did it ever dawn on you people that after 40 years of missionary service to the ends of the earth, opening three fields, building some 3,000 churches, building 13 Bible schools, founding Continental Bible College in Brussels, Belgium, doing a thousand other things, raising millions of dollars to do it with and to help evangelize the world. After pioneering over 900 first missionary conventions across America, if I was to go to my mission board today with the same qualifications that I had 50 years ago, they wouldn't even look at me. But I thank God 50 years ago, he looked at me and he loved me. Hallelujah. And he said, come on, green away, follow me and I'll make you, I'll make you, hallelujah. I'll make you, Woo, I'll clean up your act. Amen. Woo. I'll send you to the ends of the earth. He did it. I am Alpha and Omega, man. I keep hanging in there. Blessed are they that keep the commandments, that do the commandments, that they might have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murders, idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and the morning star. Woo, and the spirit and the bride say come and let him that heareth say come and let him that is a thirst come hallelujah Woo, and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely 
For I testify unto you, every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall take or add of the prophecy of the, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of the prophecy, God shall take away his part. If you think God's not going to do it, man, he's going to do it. Everything he said, he's going to do it. Amen. I don't care how many people have taken this and twisted it. He's going to do what he said he would do. Amen. Amen. And you can change repentance to confession, but repentance is still the key word. You can confess till your eyes fall out. Man, you've got to repent. And then you're in. Hallelujah. Amen. Then you're ready to sing the king is coming. You're not ready for the king to come when all you're doing is confessing. Whew. Amen. It's like singing praises. Now they say all you got to do is sing praises. You can sing praises till your eyes fall out. I don't care how many off the wall. You, you know, we've thrown our songbooks away, and with it, we've thrown half of our theology. Now we sing praises. But I'm going to tell you something. You can sing praises forever, but he only accepts that praise when it is accompanied by obedience to this book. Right. Amen? And the key word is obedience, not praise. Now, praise that comes out of obedience... Woo, you're in good shape. Amen. But honest to goodness, you know, you, you, you wait for that worship and you hear these people singing praises. You know, one morning I was sitting in the church and all I could think of was, I'm forever blowing bubbles, pretty bubbles. And, you know, for all it was doing. Because when they quit, when they quit singing praises, they were dead as last year's bird nest. Are you with me? As Don Branco would say, you watch that day. Are you with me? The Spirit is saying, come. Amen. Amen. He which testifieth these things says, surely I come quickly. Amen. Amen. And the reply was, even so, come quickly. Lord Jesus, let it be so. Amen. Maranatha, I wish it would come back into our vocabulary. I wish we would go back to preaching Jesus could come tonight because it kept the edge on us. And the reason that you don't hear even or Jesus, Paul heard it. Paul said it because when Paul was in business, Christians were being burned in the fire boiled in oil and killed all the day long and Paul said my 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 if this is all there is if this is it then we are of all men most miserable but thank God this is not all there is to it they can kill us all the day long but we have an eternal hope that the king is coming hallelujah Woo, he, the king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. The reason that you don't hear even so come quickly, Lord Jesus, is because we're living in an age of let's all be healthy, wealthy, and wise. That's what we're preaching. God doesn't want anybody to be sick. And if you're sick, your mama must have been off track. Dumbest thing I ever heard. You tell
tell Paul, tell Paul in prison with the blood running down his back. Hey, Paul, there's no suffering. Tell Stephen when they were stoning him to death. Hey, Stephen, my, 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 you got to get up, man. We're preaching a positive gospel. You can't die. Channel 2 is going to be here. And the charismatics will hear about this. That's all there is to this gospel, is healthy, wealthy, and wise. Nowhere in that book did he promise me healthy, wealthy, and wise in the sense that we're preaching it. All he ever promised me was grace for the battle. Amen. A shelter in the time of storm. Amen. A high tower. Woo, a refuge. The book is full of it. Amen. We used to be a militant movement. We used to sing, I'm in the battle for my Lord. Now we sing, I'm forever blowing. You know, I remember when we used to sing, over the top for Jesus, bravely we will go. Over the top for Jesus, routing every foe, never delaying when we hear the bugle blow. We'll fight for right with all our might as over the top we go. Hallelujah. Amen. And there was fire in our souls. wealthy and wise and you see the reason you don't hear it so much anymore in church is because we're pretty comfortable if the Pentecostal movement never had another move of the Holy Spirit we don't need it we got enough singers and enough institutions and enough preachers and enough canned tata and enough everything we can put on a service we don't lack for singers or musicians. And we could survive for the next hundred years because we're big enough now purely through transfer and biological growth. And then we wonder. I heard somebody say recently, a man of God that I trust. He said, God is not moving. Somebody asked me, Greenaway, do you think we'll ever have the heaven? Am I boring you? Are you with me? Yeah. Let me see your hands. You can have a great service tomorrow night, but I'll talk to you. The planners will take you so many ways you'll have to like some of them. So brace your feet. Healthy, wealthy, and wise. Somebody said, Greenaway, will there ever be a mother, another move like there was at the turn of the century? I don't know. But all I know is any man that wants it can have it. Any preacher that wants it can have it. And any church that wants it can have it. Amen. You don't have to look at the world. Look at yourself. Amen. What you need is in this church. Everything you need is in this church. Amen. All you got to do is hit the altar with it. And let the fire burn. And things will happen. I've said that. <laughs> you see, I'm old enough now. I'm not trying to impress anybody. And I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm so old I don't even buy green bananas anymore. <laughs> they know you're, you know you're getting old when you lean over to tie your shoes and say, is there anything else I should do while I'm down here? Brother Loper invited me. I didn't beg to come up here.
But as you know, it's refreshing to feel God, isn't it? Amen. To feel the presence. No wonder Moses said, if thy presence go not with us, carry us not up hence. It's like old Habakkuk when he, when he had a problem. He, he opens that book of Habakkuk with problems. Whoa, he had a problem. You know what his problem was? He said, God's not doing enough. He's not doing anything about sin. Oh, he was critical of God. He's letting all these people, you know, whoo, I hear people saying the same thing today. God is not doing enough. <laughs> then in the second chapter, he had another problem because he discovered God was doing too much. Because God told him he was going to bring in the Chaldeans and kill every one of them. Because they were full of sin. <laughs> How'd you like that? Old Habakkuk had problems. Amen. He had so many problems, he just sat. He just finally sat down in the high place in the high tower and he just sat there and he, he remembered God. Amen. He didn't remember the good old days. He didn't remember, he didn't remember uh, the books that he had read. He remembered God and what God had done for them. Amen. He, he, he thanked God for the past and then God, boom, gave him two promises. He had two problems, big problems. God wasn't doing enough. Now God is doing too much. But then after he sorted it out, God gave him two promises and he said, Habakkuk, the just shall live. Amen. Now we, we quote that to just shall live by faith. But it isn't, it isn't what it says. It says the just shall live. Faith is a means by which we will live. Hallelujah. But when the stars fall down and the earth like a giant ember cools off and the nations of the world will have been forgotten and the devil will be pushed into hell, the just shall live forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Woo! The just shall live. Amen. Woo! You may treat me bad. Or is it badly? Which is it? No, it isn't. If my wife was here, she'd kill me. She's an English major from two universities. She said, Charles, you can't say that. I said, I've already said it. I can hear her. She goes like this. Mm -mm -mm. I can hear her in 3,000 people doing that. And when she does that, that means, green away, you're getting the wheel off the track. <laughs> But I love her. Been married to her 50 years this year. Whew. We're going to make it. We're not going to look like anything, but we're going to make it. Amen. Because the just shall live. Whew. What do I care what happens to me? I have the promise the just shall live. Amen. Whoo! The just shall live. And then the second promise he gave him was, there's coming a day. In that bright triumphant morning, when the trump of God shall sound, we shall rise. You don't even know it. We shall rise. Somebody sing it. Nah, you don't know it. But the reason that you're not hearing He cometh. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, is because we're too comfortable. We're too affluent. We're not really looking for His appearing. But He wants us to. He wants us to love His appearing. Amen. In my years to the ends of the earth, 
You've heard me say I counted 126 graves of missionaries in Africa that never reached 40 years old. Some of them were my buddies. But I'll tell you what, every one of them died bringing back the king. Amen. Amen, because what brings back the king is the witness in all the earth. I've sat with a shotgun across my knees at night to guard a body so we could have a decent funeral in the morning. But brother, I knew when I buried my buddy, he died to bring back the king. Who Hallelujah. Who can declare his glory? Amen. When you die to bring back the king, man, you're in good shape. Healthy, wealthy, and wise, no. Bringing back the king, yes. The king is coming. Jesus is coming, man, and we're all going to stand before him. I don't care how much fruit and fiber you eat. I don't care how many vitamins you take. You're going to die. You're going down a one-way street. There are no U-turns and nobody's coming back. And you're not going to meet me. You're going to meet him. And I'm going to meet him. We're going to meet him. The king. Amen. <laughs> Victor Plymeyer. Help bring back the king. He walked across Tibet. He died for Tibet. Bringing back the king. Lived on rats, starved. And the devil said to a demon one day, kill his wife. And out there in that bleak, barren, cold land. Victor Plymar's wife died. Couldn't even dig a grave. Frost ten feet down. He carried her lovingly in his arms up the hill. And his few Christians gathered around him and they piled stones over her body. Amen. She died bringing back the king. Amen. 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 She died witnessing her life. And then the devil said, Plymar still coming on. Kill his baby. And a few weeks later, the demon comes in and the baby dies. Back up that lonely trail. Back up to that pile of stones. Take the stones away. And lay that baby beside his mother. God forgive us. God forgive us for thinking that the only thing God intended of us was healthy, wealthy, and wise. Do you hear me? The king is coming, and he that suffers with me shall also reign. He talked about suffering, the commitment. Amen. Victor Plymeyer, when the runner came with the bandits, were rushing to kill him. He walked out over the Hermias. Gone for eight months. Nobody knew. They killed their mules and ate the flesh. Took the hides and made shoes. But the devil said, I can't stop him. He's still coming on. Amen. Amen. I wonder 
what the devil's saying about our churches tonight. Is the devil saying, I can't stop them, they're coming on. Let me ask you a question. If Simon the sorcerer, who wanted to buy the gifts, McDuffie, of the disciples, if they were to walk into our churches, would they want to buy what we have? You hear me? Well, but, but Simon, we have the formula. He said, man, I don't want the formula. I want the fire. Amen. Well, but Simon, we have the money. He said, I don't want the money. I want to buy the miracle. Amen. Would Simon want to buy what we have? You give me a few minutes. Let me see your hand. Preacher. You'd have to with that testimony. You don't have to. He's tired. I know he's weary. I'll let you go. You can go. I hope when I die, the devil says I couldn't stop him. He's coming on. Amen. Amen. Woo. He's coming on. When Joseph Ton, Ton came to this country from Romania, went through university with flying colors, and the day he graduated, walked into the president's office and said, Sir, thank you for the education and thank for your help. I'm going back to Romania to sow the seed. The president jumped up and said, Joseph, you don't have to go back to Romania. We have a thousand places in America where we can use a man of your brilliance. And Joseph Torn said, you have a thousand men to fill those places too. But God called me to my Romania. Amen. Amen. And Joseph Torn went back to Romania. Began holding meetings and God began saving people and healing people and stirred the whole nation. Most of you know that I've been going into Russia, Bulgaria, Romania, Czechoslovakia, Poland for 30 years. You know that. And I see all of this new stir now. Everybody's going to Romania. Everybody's going to you. You know what I say? Where were those buzzards back there 30 years ago when you didn't know whether you're going to get out or not? Amazing. I don't Are you with me? God's looking for the genuine article tonight. He said, I'll baptize you with power. I'll send you forth. Amen. Even if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. Amen. Amen. One day the, the authorities called him in and said, Joseph, you can't preach anymore. Recall your messages in your tapes. And Joseph Ton said, sir, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm going to preach. That's my message. That's my calling. Amen. But Joseph, you can't do that. He said, I'm going to do it. And that commander stood there and said, Joseph, you leave us no alternative but to shoot you. To kill you. Where does that fit into healthy, wealthy, and wise doctrine? Where does that fit in? Where there's not supposed to be any hurt or no aches. Where does it fit? It doesn't. It doesn't fit. That's the problem. That's why Simon the sorcerer would have to look pretty hard. It's because we're, we're looking for the quick fix, the happy elation, the little song and dance. 
But God's looking for plowmen. God's looking for apostolic people with apostolic message and apostolic power. Amen. That's what God's looking for. Amen. <coughs> and Joseph looked at them and said, Sir, that's your ultimate weapon. That's the ultimate weapon you have is to kill me. That's all you could do. But he said, I also have an ultimate weapon. And that is to die. I can die. For what I believe and what I preach, I'll die. Amen. You may shoot me. That's your ultimate weapon. But my ultimate weapon is to die. No wonder Jesus hanging on Calvary's cross. When the devil said, kill him, and the crowd roared, crucify him. And he looked at the powers of hell and said, you're using your ultimate weapon to crucify me. But I too have a weapon. Woo! Amen. It's Friday now. But my ultimate weapon. <laughs> Sunday's coming. Woo. It's Friday now. But Sunday's coming. Went up from the grave. And said look at me. I am the resurrection. And the life. Took out his pen and wrote, I will build my church. He's going to have his church. He will not be denied what he died for. Amen. He died for his church. Hallelujah. God help us tonight to stand up and keep coming on. Amen. Whatever it takes. It's Friday now. Friday's bad day. It's a bad day. It's a day of darkness. If you think this old world's going to get any better, you better have another look at it. We're into the biggest hornet's nest we've ever been in in the history of America that'll make the Revolutionary War and the Civil War and a lot of other wars look beauty. We're up against a billion Muslims, a billion fatalists that you can't deal with with guns. They say, kill me. If I die for Allah, I have instant paradise. Hey man, that you don't get through to that mentality with diplomacy. They say, load up the truck. Where do you want me to drive it? Well, I'm going to die for Allah. But Duffy, if we believed in heaven as much as they believe in their paradise, the world would have been one. Hey Amen. God have mercy. We've only seen the beginning of terrorism. We're up against it, friends. And always look back on history. No nation that Islam ever conquered ever went back to Christianity again. There are 57 Islamic republics lock, stock, and barrel in the world today. We're up against hell itself. And I want you to know as a church tonight, we are not in a word encounter with this world. We're in a power struggle with the forces of hell that want to destroy us. But friends, lift up your heads. Your redemption draweth nigh. The King is coming. Hallelujah. The King is coming. Woo! The King is coming. The King is coming. The king is coming. I want you to know it's Friday now, but Sunday's coming. Amen. And that, that broken, bruised body hanging on the cross, there's still more healing in his body than we have diseases. Well, hallelujah. There's still more supply in that broken body than we have demand. There is still more forgiveness in that broken body than the world has sins. Red, yellow, black, and white. 
There's power, redeeming power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Woo. The King is coming. The King is coming. It's our hope. My hope is not in kingdom now. My hope is in... Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Last year, 400,000 Christians were either killed, imprisoned, exiled, suffered for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In China, in Mozambique, in Ethiopia, in a psalm, they tied in a psalm nine of our preachers and killed them, burned them. They dragged one of our preachers behind a tractor through the city streets until there was nothing left but a skeleton. You tell me about Allah. You tell me about the mentality that we're up against now. That's why, friend, the church needs to be crying, come quickly. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. And the only thing that will bring back the King is when we have witness to the end of the earth. When we have witness to the depths of our cities. Are you with me? The King is coming. I remember in the early 40s, I was in the nation of Nigeria. And I was in Lagos, and I was getting ready to make that long 375-mile trip all the way to the north. When I got to Lagos, there were banners everywhere. And on those banners, it said, the king is coming. King George was coming. The king is coming. The tom-toms beat. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, until the ground vibrated. Every village I hit, they were drunk. They were waving banners. The king is coming. For two days and two nights, all I heard was the drunken cry of men screaming, the king is coming. I heard it in at least 30 different languages. The king is coming until something on the inside of me grew heavy to see all of the sin remember I was a young missionary but I remember that night up in Joss the walled city when I crawled in a little cot in a little way station mud-covered hut and the last thing I had heard was the king is coming and I began to pray and suddenly that place was illuminated with the Shekinah glory of God and I saw the banners waving it wasn't King George I heard the trumpet sounding hallelujah and I saw I saw my Savior coming for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I said to that world, sing on, but I have a song too. The king is coming. Hallelujah. Even so, come quickly. You believe he's coming? Stand up. Come on up here. Come on up here. I don't want anybody left in the seats. I don't want you to come up here and stand and look at me. I want you to come up here. And I want us to think about the king is coming. Are we ready? Come on. Oh, the king is coming. Oh, the king is coming. I can hear the trumpet sounding. And now I see the sea.
his face and sing it to him tonight. Oh, the king. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. The king. Oh, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Even so, come quickly. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. We love you tonight. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. Oh, I can hear the trumpet sounding.